fresh from Ignite November 2021 edition. Here is my top 10 in 10 minutes across Dynamics 365, Power Platform, and a little bit of Microsoft Teams in there too. Now there is a huge first announcement here. This is going to look like a lot of new terminology and jargon on the screen. It is that, but let me show you what this is all about. So my number one feature here is around two new technologies. One is called Context IQ and one is called Microsoft Loop. Now Microsoft Loop is basically, think of a concept like adaptive cards, but it's going much further than that. The idea is that we can build components that can be used anywhere and you can use that to surface up your business applications data in Teams and Outlook. So what this allows us to do is things like this. This is the idea of having a little um, component in Teams, which is got live data from Dynamics in it. You can edit that thing. You can have multiple people working on it at the same time. And it's all controlled by the security and permissions as well. Same concept in Outlook. Look at this. So this is really starting to th rethink the idea of business applications. Instead of a business application being, oh, I go and log into Dynamics in this browser, it just exists where you are. Now, these examples are using Dynamics 365 as a starting point because, of course, you know, that's what we work with. But they also showed an example of using this with SAP data. So the idea now is that collaboration first bring all of these things in with these Microsoft Loop components. Context IQ that's in there as well is giving you even more to work with. Contextual suggestions of things like who to at mention, um, calendar times that might be coming up. There's a bigger piece with Context IQ and being able to intelligently suggest things around all sorts of content and things that you're creating across Microsoft 365. So absolutely huge space. This is how it impacts us in business applications. And I think this is an absolutely completely new way of thinking about what business applications are, where they sit and how they work. It's <laughs> really exciting. At number two, this one I spotted at an earlier conference earlier in the year, buried deep, but it's a headline announcement now. Microsoft 365 and Dataverse search integration. What we saw is an example here of typing in a search in Teams and you can search across all of these different things, people and your Dynamics data in Teams because that search functionality becomes your business data as well as your collaboration and productivity data. That's going to be immensely powerful. Power Apps Pay As You Go plan. This is something that we've been looking for for a while. Consumption based model for licensing Power Apps. I've actually got another whole video going deeper into that if you'd like to know more. Essentially, it's a similar concept to a per app plan, but now you can do it through your Azure subscription and you pay per active user. So rather than having to have that upfront commitment of saying, yeah, we've got this many users, if somebody runs the app once in a month, they become an active user and you just pay for them. So great for those scenarios where you might have a huge user base with infrequent or occasional usage of your apps. We have here at number four, Power Apps Maker Collaboration. There's two things going on here. One is the ability to comment. So you can leave comments the way you can, say when you're collaboratively editing a Word document or PowerPoint or whatever. This actually applies not just in Power Apps, but across the other pieces as well, Power Virtual Agents and Power Automate. And then on the pro dev side, we're seeing the start of, this is an experimental feature of co-authoring, <laughs> where you can have two makers working at the same time. That dreadful message that says your app is locked for editing because someone else is editing, be gone, <laughs> no more of that. And we're on a journey here through to full kind of live collaborative building, but this is the first step on this journey. Next up, we have the ability to deliver standalone apps. So this means you can actually package up and deliver your app through Google Play or the Apple Store and have it fully branded and have it fully operating as an app on your device rather than going through the Power Apps app on your phone. Now, really important point to point out here, that this slogan here helps same app, same users, new clothes. This doesn't bypass the need for licensing. Users still need to be licensed. They still need to authenticate to log in and so on. But it just means you can package up that app, brand it, deploy it in much easier ways and have it as a standalone app on the phone, which is an experience that I know a lot of people have been looking for. 
industry clouds, I'm bundling a whole heap of things together here because this is a really, really important part of if we look to, you know, beyond what we call business applications and what's now being positioned as the digital transformation platform, this is bringing together all of these things. It's Dynamics 365, Microsoft 365, uh, LinkedIn, Azure AI, all sorts of things coming together and bringing the best of them together. So we're seeing now that we've got the Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit and the Microsoft Cloud for Financial Services both generally available. And they have like ready-made solutions for those industry scenarios that people can just easily deploy and run with. So that is a really different way of starting to think about what solutions are and how they are deployed. And there are some other industry clouds in various states of preview. Healthcare Cloud has been out for a little while. We also saw in Satya's keynote the announcement of the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability. Not so much an industry cloud as a horizontal cloud, but I'm grouping it in here because honestly I'm giving you three for one here at number five. This is helping organizations to manage their um, emissions, report on them, analyze them, reduce them. So this is Microsoft's commitment to helping other organizations with sustainability. And it looks like some very impressive technology going there. Can't wait to see more of that. There's an image of the kind of thing that you're going to be able to do with that. At number seven here, we have bring your own AI models into Power Platform. Another two for one here. Lobe is a system that allows you to do very easy AI models with images. So you can bring in a whole heap of images into your desktop. This is like genuinely no code experience. You don't have to be an expert to use this and it will automatically classify them and, and create a model for you. So you can do that in the desktop experience. It's free to use and then Bingo, put that up inside to be consumed in AI Builder. Another part of this is you can also bring your own machine learning models. So if you're into that space and you're bringing your own custom machine learning models that you want to then use or make available to low code users in Power Platform, that's now a thing that you can do. At number eight, oh no, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a picture of Loeb AI, just to give you a sense of what that can do. At number eight, governance and heaps of work going on here all the time about improving and getting more granular in particular with the governance features in Power Platform. And we've got a couple more here. So now you'll be able to have conditional access policies on individual apps and quarantine non-compliant apps. So this means you can start to do things like saying, OK, well, this particular app might not have any particular data loss prevention policy stopping it being made, but it's against our policy and we're just quarantining that app or conditional access policies. You can restrict things like you say it must have multi-factor authentication. I'm going to block certain users or block guests from using it or require that it's only used in, in these certain types of ways. Some more granular controls there on the admin side. At number nine, we have a couple of features here. I'm doing a lot of two for ones in this one, aren't I? Power Virtual Agents in Teams. A couple of things here that I know people have really wanted. So we've got the ability for the bot to proactively message you. Your expense report has been approved, that kind of thing. And the other thing coming soon that's been announced here is the ability to put your chatbot in a team so you can interact with it in a channel, not just in the chat. So it almost behaves like a virtual team member. You can at mention the bot in the channel and have it interact in that channel in that team rather than just in private chat. And finally, last but certainly not least, this is a super cool thing. I think this is something that's going to really, you know, lift that idea of hybrid and remote work is we have mesh for teams. So basically you can come as your avatar into teams. So this idea of being able to interact, people can see your facial expressions. You've got a physical presence there, but not with that exhaustion of being on the camera all of the time. So you can present yourself in that alternate way. And then for group get togethers, this 3D kind of space where you can actually see and interact with other people in the room. Audio that works so that you've just got, you know, if you're having a conversation with the one person next to you and other people are talking on the other side of the room, the audio behaves like it would in a real room. I've had a play with a similar thing in Altspace VR and it's a really, really good experience. So I think this is going to be a game changer for hybrid and remote work. So that's my top 10 in 10 minutes from Ignite November 2021. I will pop a link in the description for the book of news, which has all the details about all the announcements if you'd like to check that out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up to date with new features and you find this content useful.